back yet uh, another beautiful Thursday morning here in the city of Abekuta and this is the Daybreak Show on Rock City 101.9 FM Citizens Forum like that uh, song says Ilira Loro we are going to be taking a uh, travel through the world of our health services this morning um, straight away we have somebody who is uh, apt on it ably qualified to do this with us. Dele Ayodo is my name. And I am Toby uh, Joseph. Uh, just like Dele said, we have in the studio the Chairman Board of Trustees of the Institute of Health Services of Nigeria right here in the studio. Uh, the O2 of Ubu in, uh, in the state. And of course, the first Ago in Egbaland. We don't know what else for Chief Dodger. You are welcome to the debate show. Thank you very much. All right. Um, of course, um, health provision and services across the world. Yes. It's uh, United Nations uh, that are making it compulsory. Yes. First, let's come to. Uh, let's begin from the state, and then maybe we'll now go up uh, further. Um, governments come, government goes and make promises. Uh, we have the NHIS, even though it's a federal one, but we have some of them localized by the state. We have uh, what they call the Bomoro, which is like the NHIS, and other uh, named programs of the administration. All these, have they been able to give Nigerians a comfortable health service? Thank you very much, Dile and Joseph. I want to say our healthcare delivery system is just like uh, Professor Yobodi said yesterday on the television meeting that everything in Nigeria we have to go back to look and repackage it. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Nigeria health system has been in common tools for some time. And like any other things, we can start from state local government, but the problem is that the Nigeria health system is now in a very, very dangerous situation. And like uh, anybody knows, we now have a teaching hospitals that are nothing. When Abasha came in, one of the things he came in, he said teaching hospitals are like a clinics and they are nothing. That's how he took the, the government of the Federation. Since then, what has happened? We have in the health system in Nigeria today where we have to go back to the drawing board. One, at federal level, at state level, even at local government level. At federal level, we people in Ogun State, we have contributed our quota that many other parts of the country, and that's why I'm very, very happy to say that when you look at the history of Nigeria, Ogun State has contributed more than any other state in terms of resources, in terms of personal attack. The first minister in the independence of health was Majakodumi. After Majakodumi, we have Fayoroshiji. After Fayoroshiji, we have Fuliko Rasonkuti. After Fuliko Rasonkuti, we have the late Oshoti Men. All these are Ogun State indigenous who have performed extremely well. The first professor of medicine, Professor Tiovelos Ogunlezi, is from Ogun State. He has contributed so much. And when he was a professor of medicine in UCH in the 70s and things, the man was not as far as to want to be a medical director. He wanted to practice his medicine that he learned. But today, most of our teaching hospitals, our health centers, our federal medical centers are run by people who, because they want to be somebody, we should go back to what happened in the 60s before independence or by independence. When usage was established in 1954, the head of administration at that usage was the three of them were English people who were professional health administrators. They handed over to the most first Nigerian, the first black man to do health administration as a profession, as a course. The chief lead S. A. Ladende, of course, is also from Open State. And after that, the things of but the problem started when the headship started 
to be the doctors are now the medical, the chief consultant and thing. And that, that, that's interesting. Are you a medical doctor or a trained? I'm a trained administrator. A trained health and doctor. A trained health administrator. Uh, now, I was trained in England and I work in England and I still contain my relationship with health administrators in South Australia, in UK, in US. In UK, the health of health administration are not doctors. But the the story we hear and told by this week is that there is so much political interference in the administration <coughs> and running of these things. As professionals, when they come with their own ideas of what their ideals should be, uh, political concentration torpedoes these things, and then it becomes difficult for them to manage. So if you are saying it's, it's the health sector, then what about those policy makers themselves? The policy makers themselves, for instance, when they just started in, one of the best minister of health Nigeria ever had was the late Amino Kano. When he was the minister of health, they have what they call development plan. When Mark Lokudu had, they have five-year development plan. They kept on development plan. In these last 10 years, there are no development plans. The minister comes and go, but the policy has not been. I'm sorry to say, the minister that we had of health, that we had from 210 to 215, with all due respect, was not the best of minister we ever had. That was the minister who was there, was a professor. None of the professional bodies Pharmacies, technologies, pediatric health administrators, they never had access to him. And all the man was interested in to have gathered thing. After that, he left to go and contest election. Well, you people must know what happened because of election. The man want to be a governor. Was it an state or not? What happened? Nothing. But what I'm saying, we should go back to the system where policy makers are people who have the thing. Healthcare delivery is a team work. To be a team leader is not the prerogative of any professional. In UK, you can be the head of any institution if on marriage. As I'm talking to you now, in England, the head of even health of sex in the thing is a woman. And for office for formerly he was a trained nurse. Then he went to do management course and he became capable and was able to lead everybody. A team leader must be one who has the control of managerial ability, stability, understanding to get everybody to move together. The problem we have been having in the country since we started, see medical director became thing. Some of these medical directors in the American school, they don't learn budgeting, they don't learn administration, they don't learn supply. But some of them made out of it. At one stage, I spoke out when Bear Corazon Kuti was the secretary of Nigeria Medical Association. And we confronted that if you want to be a medical director, you must have some management training. And I was asked to come and be giving lectures at the Nigeria Postgraduate College. At that time, they were at Papa Road. And we were giving some of these things. But today, we have people who are in the helm of affairs because they just want to lead. Look at what happened of our national health budget. What happened of our national insurance budget. What has government about all the money they budget for health. 85% of money budget for health goes into allowances and salary. The patients for which the money doesn't get benefit for it. How expensive are hospitals now? How many of our teaching hospitals can do what is supposed to do? to train, to do research, and to educate and render service. If you go to Luth now, you have it how much is it for you to be admitted to Luth. That will go and bring so much. Even at the Federal Medical Center here. That, 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 that took me to the other issue. The cost of getting health services yes. um, in the country. Yes. That, yes. That's one of the reasons why so many people seek solace in the travel uh, sector. And then some people also identified it as why fake drugs and fake practitioners are abound. How can this be tackled frontally? Well, the thing can be tackled when we have a good policy. Our policy should now be on 
preventive rather than curative. We should prevent things happening to everybody. That is why Oluko is at Okuti Star, the primary health center, where people can easily go to their nearest place and everything, so they prevent it. Then if it's can, they now go to tertiary wealthy. But now you talk about free drugs, there are so many of it. There are so many things. And I want to thank the governor for the state for what uh, people are also is doing. Many people may not know it, but we thank him. It's not only in the area of uh, blood or thing. Two a week ago, he went around the state with his new able commissioner of health to close so many uh, hospitals up. Even in my own area in Nifo, there are three hospitals that we all know you can't be an hospital, but because these people get money, they not say that and they were running. And so many of them were closed up in Ijebu, in Adudu, and things like that. This is one credit I want to give to the governor for doing that. And also, he must also update his own facilities at Ijae, at Ifo, at Ota, and all those things. Out of your data. I'm quite conversant. Before I'm also came in, we are so short of personnel, even though the percentage is not good enough, but we can increase. By the way, we should. The health workers are still crying. Yeah, they are still crying. There are shortage. There's no doubt about it. But the point is that we can increase it. And one of the things I think Governor Amoso want to advise him that he should do, as he's now doing on the road, telling the federal government to allow him to do the road, federal roads, look at after you for to Agege, that's a federal road, unless I'm also out of government of the state move into it, the same thing going to Agbara, that's a federal road, unless the state does something, when is the government going to, federal going to be able to do it and see the suffering. Similarly in health, we now have a federal medical center here in Abekuta, who have all the Specialties that are as good as any other teaching hospital. I have people like that, Dr. Uncom, Dr. Shepardi, Dr. Uncom. They and people in Aro, they should then coordinate because they are serving the people of Fogo State. So there should be a coordination between the Federal Fogo State Management Board, Aro Psychiatric Hospital, Federal Medical Center. They are treating Nigerians. The money is coming for Nigeria that they should be able to join resources together. So the private hospital that are seeing their mushroom. Sorry, let, let's be clear. So you are saying the Ogun State government should get itself involved in the administration of the FMC. Yes. Which is a federal teaching hospital. Yes. But what about its own different generation? We have also. We have then, also. Then they should coordinate. That's why I mean. they have also. And I'm sorry to say, the number of specialty you have in the FMC, you can't compare with when also. Before I also came, they are going to close also medical up because the last five years as also before I also came, also was not recognized for training doctors because they do not fulfill the condition. Thank God, he came in 2011. By 2013, we have to rally around. And now uh, Osut is now producing doctors as it used to be. Osut used to be one of the best universities when it was established. I can tell you, when Osut was established, they were producing the best doctors at national level, the best lawyers, and the best accountants. They were grown for that thing because I know the Bola Ajibola Prize were being won by students of Osut when they do the law exams. The same thing, accountant, were being won by Kuye. Kuye, the man who died, he had his prize. The Osuts are going are the one winning it. Also in medicine. Because Uliko Irazankuti, even when he was a minister, he used to go to Osu to give lectures. They were the one of the people who trained them that we can do operation by using torchlight, primary health center. I think, and then at the national level, also be counting. But for one reason or the other, if you read the book written by Professor Biya Fonja, I spent a rat, you will see what happened during that period. But thank God that neglect.
that route has been cleared. Now, Bashar, yes. let us uh, try to <coughs> situate this yes. your idea yes. of the state coordinating the affairs of FMC, uh, all youth, and of course uh, the general hospitals. Yes. Are you recommending an adv a medical advisory board that will comprise of some of these no, doctors? I'm, yes, I'm recommending a joint board. Okay. Which you know, for instance, in our hospital, Arrow Hospital is a center of excellence for research and training in mental health. Yes. Okay? Federal Medical Center have a lot of things, like uh, uh, cardiologists that they have in there. Now, in the uh, guy, they have surgeon. Now, that will be when something of this happens, they should get these people together that the patients and the people of Obose should get the best because these three bodies are coordinating. I hope you are getting me. Yes. They are coordinating. And therefore, if anything happens, they know who to call, they know where to go, and the benefit will be to the patient. Okay. Now, uh, then let's talk about uh, uh, the cost of getting uh, medical services in Nigeria. Uh, one major issue that uh, Nigerians have decried is the the lack of uh, proper function or lack of proper management yes. uh, of the NHIS scheme, uh, the National Health Insurance. Uh, what would you identify are the major issues with the NHIS and how can we make it work, not only at the national level, uh, but also in local states? Thank you very much. Let's start from the national level. When the NHIS was first introduced, I happened to be one of the people that benefited from WHO sponsorship to go and see how it works. And the NHS was well conceived. In England, the National Health Service in 1948 was established that any every woman being, when you are well and working, you contribute. So when you are sick, you don't have to look for money. And that was the basis on which the NHS was supposed to work. That every civil servant, everybody, even if you are not uh, self employed, you pay something when you are well. So when you are sick, it's from that money they take to her, that the purpose of NHS. And when it was started, my mentor, the late Professor Adeo Ilambo, was the Deputy Director General in WHO at that time, which makes a lot of fun available for Nigeria and facility and training for a lot of Nigerians to go and see what we have. So, when that was done, it was started, it was done. But unfortunately, it was hijacked, it was badly managed, it was badly run. Look at what is happening now. The, the HMO and the NHS are free. I was shocked to read in the paper two, a week or two days ago, 318 billion for the money for the NHS and the HMO, they were arguing. They even went to the house to present the paper. You see what happened. Even the members of the house were laughing when the, the people were fighting each other. And the problem is that everybody is not using the money for the purpose for which they are meant. The HMO, when the NHS started, the HMO was supposed to be one to run it. And they were to be giving money three, three months. Now, I'm sure the professor who is the secretary of NHS, he said he now wants to be paying them every month. And of course, it was challenge that if you why do you want to live to three months? At three months, why do you want to be living to one, one month? That people have to come and beg you and ask you. And of course, thank God, a member of the house told him that is illegal because the proper thing, you should give them three months' money to plan it and work it. So the first thing we should do is to go back to drawing board. Let the thing work properly. The thing should be like anybody in this organization, when you are working from your salary, some percentage is paid, and when you are sick, that money, you should not be the time we are looking for money. When you are sick, the health insurance should be able to take care of your illness. When you want to have a baby, or when you are pregnant, your wife wants to have a delivery, that should be the money, that should be from there. And the number of people who are working, at any particular time, will surely be more than those who are sick. You understand? And these are some of the things that we now need to go back to drawing board and see how properly we should harness this. Now, um, obviously, um, we have <coughs> health care challenge right yes. now. And like you said earlier on, health is wealth. It's an essential thing. Yes. 
perhaps because of the need to get this, a lot of Nigerians have been driven to the tribal medical sector seeking alternative health uh, when you don't want to go into self-medication. Um, the late Dr. Lambo, the late Professor Likoye Rasmakuti encouraged this. Yes. What do you have to say to that? Looking at paucity of fund in the society and the need for people to get medication. You see, first and foremost, uh, Professor David Lambo is the foremost psychiatrist. The first. No, I'm not talking about the, the other Lambo. No, uh, Ita Lambo. Uh, Ita, That's uh, another great man. It will interest you that Ayuta Labo is not a medical doctor. He's a drug scientist and he's one of the best doctor minister of health we ever had. No, not uh, Ayuta. I'm talking sure. of the Baba. Um, Adeoye. No, not Adeoye. Lambo. Um, sorry, pardon me, we call Baba Fi. Well, Baba Fi, oh, that's all right. That is a traditional that medicine is doctor. Medicine, yes. Okay. I know him very well. And that one he started with him. And that is the first thing that Uliko Irason Kuti, having come from the same background with Baba Afi, he invited Baba Afi to the Ministry of Health. I was there. So you traditional doctors, come and show us how to do. But you know the traditional thing, they don't trust themselves. They don't trust anybody. So they say they do this, but they don't count the total, give you the ingredients of what they do. And only could give them an opportunity to say, look, document, write it, so that if you are going some give some give some drug, let us know the content of the drug they are giving them. Let them know in what degree they should take it. Okay? But those things are not properly measured. There are things that traditional medicine can do. When I was there, I went to China to see they use a lot of harvest medicine. And when you are going to China, when you get there at the hospital, they will ask you, do you want to be treated in Chinese travel medicine or you want to do to treatment? You have a choice. And I was fortunate, I was fortunate because I was sponsored by WHO to go and see what they do there. And then they are doing, even up to now, the acupuncture they are doing in China is more effective than anything you can do. And of course, Professor Adil Yelampo, when he was deputy director of the he brought acupuncture to Nigeria so that people can see side by side with it the purpose for effectiveness and for cost effectiveness. And of course, we discovered that acupuncture can do a lot of things at a less cost. And this is the that, That's the, the idea. Part of what will be seen at the drawing board that you have mentioned. Yes, right. Should those who are in the orthodox medicine, uh, the medical doctors, do, 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 don't you think if you have a situation where the trado practices introduced into. We the invited them, even you could have some could make a law for them. He set up a board of traditional medicine, the Minister of Health. At that time, I was there. The current Minister of Labor, Christian Dige, was a director in the Federal Minister of Health. He was in charge to even coordinate this traditional medicine council and were given opportunity to do the thing. But one of the things that they do not document, you see, if you want to give somebody the try to do that, you should not you should know the strength. No, that, that's what I'm saying. If they do not document but, and we have it introduced in medical schools. Yes. That is, can't our own, oh, just like you just um, situated yes. to the situation in China, yes. can they now help them to perfect it? Exactly. And, uh, and that is that what, working? yes, because that is what Oliko and Asokuti wanted to do. When they set up the board, but you know the traditional medicine are people, they were not coming forward. They were not giving them the same thing because they were not sure if they gave them, they might not be able to keep something to them. If you have ever been to where traditional medicine people work, I have thought, in my, when I was a young man, I saw where they were looking the way in the traditional medicine scene. They were just giving them, speaking them and giving them drugs without correct measurement of what they are doing. You say something three times a day, at one quantity it should be. But what we are seeing is what we have been advocating. Let us get together and work together because some of these are our herbal things, they are very, very good. 
and therefore to be able to marry them together, we must refine them, let them go through researches and things to be able to know the dosage quality that people can take to be effective. Uh, Bashan, uh, yes. you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, it's not compulsory, or it's not necessary as a rare to have doctors as chief medical directors at our various hospitals. Uh, I would uh, want you to look at it from the top down. Must we have a minister of health that is a medical doctor? Yes, I think that's it. I think we should have a minister of health because in everything, even in UK, when I was there, Barbara Castle was the Minister of Health and things like that. We should have. But what I think we can most look at, originally, doctors are not to head hospitals. The moment they start getting hospitals, that's where our problem started. Because one, in their medical school, they do not learn how to do administration or management. And the moment they started, I can tell you the story how it started. And I can tell you because I know that when the doctor administrator were running hospital, the late ladder and they, the late FJ Cole, and then they were doing running things properly. But the issue came when politics, without making a word, I can tell you what led to it. First, the house governor of usage was Ethel Ladenge. When the, the, um, somebody was appointed the governor of Western Region, and a creation of just it. And some people get funny idea. They went to a party one day, and they say there are two governors in a just it today, and they are both Igbobians. And of course, people look at so it's the thing that there's a governor of in the Agodi House, is a governor, and the house governor in you see is a close, and then people like that. And of course, one of the best brain Nigeria are producing medicine. He got to end up. He said, What do you mean? You mean eh, this is the people that are saying? And of course, then we have problem in 1977 when Luth was on strike and they were not able to work for six weeks. And of course, the head of state at that time was the Kudusha Gobasanjo, General Basanjo. So he called the meeting to Dodan Barak in the morning. He said, Luth has not been working. And when loose needs, the whole Nigeria can scroll. So health system was at that time because Lagos was Paralyzed. capital of Nigeria and loot was right there. So Ambassador then called everybody to Northern Bara. He said, Look, I can no longer sit here and you people are not working. Therefore, in military, when somebody uh, in war is declared, and anybody that is losing, you call the commander, the command face the Spanish call. But they give him an opportunity before that to go and deal with his uh, lieutenant and law. Now I want to know who is responsible for this loot not working. They called the dead man, house governor, or whatever. Ah, the man said, well, I am sorry, I'm not in charge of uh, doctors that are produced from the College of Medicine. And the doctors are the one on strike. And therefore, they don't come to work, but they are appointed by the College of Medicine and they are there. Ah. So he said, you are not saying, uh, are you not in control? He said, yes, you control. But the fact remains, the salary they are asking for is not within the budget of the hospital, it's the university. And so all of and just said, that, who is to charge that I want this right to be called off? And of course, the dean and the professor at that time, he said, well, I'm in charge in the medical school. I can get doctors to go back to work, provided you give me the instrument on to gain what they are asking for. They are asking for court detail allowance, they are asking for uh, research allowance, all these things. And of course, I can tell them to go back, provided you tell me you will look into it. You don't pay them what they ask for, but you give them something. And it's at that moment that Thomas will just say, okay, if you are the one that can go, I give you 72 hours. Go and call the strike club back, the doctor back, the strike cut off, and the thing. And that's how the doctor became, took over. take over, and then they come down. And of course, when that happened in Lagos, the same thing in Ibadan. And the late Professor Kyle Dioshotoku, he was the one who said, look, 
He was very close to Obasanjo and just said, look, I can't afford this thing. I can call the doctor to work, provided I'm in charge. And of course, to be in charge, okay, fine. And of course, they call the tribe of Obasanjo then look at their crisis and their, their call duty and they were okay, working. But since that time, the cost of running has escalated. The doctors have become more than anything. And I can give a personal example. Some medical director, when they get there, they just want to run the hospital the way they see it. If you are an O and G man, you want to give emphasis to O and G. The surgery will be neglected, the pediatrician will be neglected because he knows he's going to be there for so time. All he wants to develop is something O and G. O and G. So that things begin to say change. But then there came about a time where some medical directors who have exposed for work children, like for instance in usage, when uh, Professor Ajayi was the chief medical director, he was close to some of us and I told him, Professor, you are a professor of medicine. You can't do administration. You have to take your administrator to confidence. But say, of course, the late Mrs. Uh, Shenjobi was there then. That loses so light. When uh, Ajayi left as MD, Professor Ola Taura became the CMD. And on one occasion, the ministry used to give them direction when they go to defend their budget. They say, This is your budget. I have one They say, Well, look, all we, we ask for 1,000. They say, All we can give you is 40. Go and manage. So, uh, Ola Taura, when they were going to Abuja to defend the budget, they said, Look, I'm a psychiatrist. You the, you prepare the budget, go and defend the budget, go and tell them what you need the money for. So when they go to Abuja, the minister said, ah, where is your CMD? Why is he not here? They call him, they say, look, why do I come to come and waste my time sitting in front of you for four hours or six hours for something I cannot contribute to? These accountant and this and that, they are the one who prepare the budget. Yeah, they are the one who will explain to it and the one who will review to it. And he says, so, they should be able to do because he has confidence in them, because he trusts them. And of course, the minister look at it, and of course, they turn that. Okay. And of course, the accountant, qualified accountant, and the call advisor, they can run the budget of our hospital very well. But when the medical director comes, you want to pull this, you want to pull that, you see, we have to go back to make sure that healthcare delivery is a teamwork. You have to have the pharmacy play their role, the technology play their role, the nurses play their role, the, the occupational trust yeah. the radiology, everybody must go. And the one at the top must be somebody who can coordinate. Right, that, that, that takes me to a very cogent uh, point, a uh, situation playing out at the Federal Medical Center here in Diaba, uh, where almost all, or let me say, all the different uh, health unions and uh, institutions are against the appointment of uh, an MD who they call an outsider. How, how do we address this? Can well, you, talk more about this? you see, I feel uncomfortable. I, the union are perfectly right. The establishment of a federal, in all the things, the appointment made yesterday is long overdue. And I'm happy that the minister was able to get that out. Some of these medical directors have been acting for 18 months, 15 months. And the result of this thing they released yesterday was done almost a year ago. What I'm saying about what the union are saying, the transparency of the man they appointed is in doubt. One, all the health, all the medical director that were announced, Ogun was announced for Yaba, most qualified, is already there. Dr. Lutu for Ebini, he was already there in this world. All the doctors that are you know, all these people are. Why this particular one that is coming from outside, a professor, I'm sorry I didn't know, professor of what? And two, if they do the interview, or the interview really thing, I don't doubt the efficiency of the ministry. But I, at one time, went to the minister of state, and he said, PA, uh, I called him, I said, tell the minister, the long time that this man is acting at FMC, if you don't want to happen, give him the planting post. He's been running it. If a man can run a institution for more than for six months without right. crisis, I think he will entitled to. But if he doesn't get confirmed appointment, he's uh, looking on his down. I can say it loud and clear. I will try and get in touch with the Honorable Minister of Health. 
because when he was vice chancellor in the battle, he was very good and his record was fantastic. But due regret, now that he's a minister of health, we want him to buck up to keep up his standard, particularly when people from Southwest are minister of health, they always have shine others. Julius Adelu Sadelu was the first pharmacist who was the Minister of Health. He did very well. Ochochi Men, extremely well. Ejita Lambo, fantastic. Adeluko Erasonkutu, the best of the best. So now that Sadewale is there, I will plead with him that you should still consult with the people on the ground for whatever decision they want to make. Because this thing they are doing, when crisis arises, it will affect ordinary people like us. And the people in the community should be seen to carry along in what they are doing. For instance, like I said earlier on, this professor, whatever they Musa, call him, uh, uh, Musa, 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 wherever he's coming from, is going to cause problems. One, when Otoloni, the first medical director, when he was uh, he was living his house in Sada South in Jari. When uh, 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 Botayo took over, John Volta was not in the rented property. He was living in his own father's house until he built his own house. Show to Loye, the same. Now, in FMC, there is no resident accommodation for doctor. Unlike use uh, Arrow, where they have the provost quarter. Unlike uh, Badan. Unlike UC, unlike KBU, where they have resident. FMC does not have. Now this man is going to live in rented accommodation, and I hope it won't be like uh, when we had a vice chancellor in Yunab that was living permanently in Ogun State Hotel, and the little boy, Badi Lipperi, had to call him, hey, look, go and address yourself. How can you be living in an hotel for three years? It's not good for the people, I think. And the similar thing to happen, this is why I will use this medium to appeal to the power that be, both at the presidency, and of course, as the Minister of Health. In fact, as of now, when I saw the announcement yesterday, I contacted our Senator, Larry Ted Joshu, who is the current chairman of so health. health. At least he should have them. We are representing, he is representing us. He should let them know the implication. Because when this crisis starts, when the man comes, he's not going to have full support of the junior. He's not going to be able to, are we going to be managing crisis? When so in, in one word, are you saying the um, idea of FMC CMD should be to come from within? If it's a good person from within, yes. Of course, all the people that have been from within, and these people have been learning, and they have been, and somebody have been looking for that one day I'll be a medical doctor. And if they do interview and it's transparent, there's no reason why they should not find a good candidate. There's no reason. But can that be changed now that they are not well, they can, well, they can look into it. And the fact is that if they don't change, I can tell you, the next four years, there can be progress. I can't see Dr. Uncop be taking instruction from somebody that is senior to in a medical school, even though you become a professor. Also, not only that, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's all these opinions that's that, been that, there. There are 65 medical consultants so in medical the hospital. Yes. So, and about five applied for the post. So yes. it's going to be difficult to, for them to be taking instructions. For all right, yes, uh, it's just about two minutes to the hour of uh, 10. They break your rock city 11.9 FM this morning, looking at the health sector. And we have with you, yes, a health administrator and elder statesman, Basharo Doja at the world. We'll take this break to allow the 10 o'clock news to come on. After that, yes, we still have Basharo at the world with us. Don't go anywhere. Keep sending your messages, questions, opinion, comments to our short code 32120. But you simply have to type R O C K first. We will be back. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's about uh, 15 minutes after the hour of 10. Daybreak show on Rock City 101.9 FM Citizens Forum. Uh, this morning we are looking at the health sector in Nigeria. In State and we have with us a health administrator, held as this man, traditional chief, Bashon Doja Adewalu. Um, okay, do we have any issues? 
I'm standing that we have not clear. Yeah, I think the last street. one we were looking was uh, FMC and how to resolve uh, uh, the, the, the crisis. There. Okay, okay. So let's uh, just uh, allow our listeners to be a part of it straight away. Thank you very much indeed. Let me thank all those who have called and uh, please, uh, my brother, Lushola Johnson. I will thank you for your thing. On the issue of traditional practitioners and that the ministry should set up a thing, I want to say this loud and clear. At the federal level, there is a council for traditional practitioners. At state level, they have a committee on traditional medicine. But the problem is that most of our brothers, our people who are traditional practitioners are not forthcoming. Since Baba Aro Lambo, yes, Lambo, Aro Lambo, Lambo, yes, Dr. when Aro Baba Lambo, died, yes. there have not been people like as viable as uh, as pragmatic as the Baba Lambo. I think some of them must uh, come up and meet the committee that have been set up at the federal level and at the state level, and I can assure you, I know when Professor Liko Ilamba Kuti was there, he provided budget for traditional traditional committee. So I'm sure this must still be there. So these people who are practicing it, they must get together. And of course, I can talk to Dr. Ayide, who is the permanent okay. secretary uh, of the management board, to find out. And where they are I will ask them to look into that. So I can assure you something we do that. With my brother talking well, my brother from uh, uh, the thing, thank you very much. God bless you. I thank every day. You are very familiar with these people here. Dudu and uh, Joseph are your classmates. I know what they are talking about. So well done. Now the one on traditional medicine, there is a language that is in. And of course, we can also come back and thank our governor for even the latest invention that has brought into Go State, which is now used Bomaru. And at least that is the clearest, nearest way that people can do. And like I said, prevention is better than cure. We should use more of our uh, health centers and uh, traditional team, and of course, they will go and improve on that. And you say we have to write in the language that people understand, mm -hmm. and that is why, even when they give you a prescription, somebody, and that's why I like the advertisement that they used to be when somebody thought, Yeah, the, the 11. Is 11 times the drug. 11, 11, 11, 11, but 11, 11, 11, and they have to explain to him. I think we should more have more of that uh, advertisement explaining it in the even the bad language. I appreciate, I hope we should continue to do that. So, Larry, we're going to do that. As you said, I'm going to have already visited the GIA and the urban hospitals at Ilaro and Ijebude, and like I'm saying that. We are working, and I can assure you, our governor believe one of his five primary cardinal points, health is one of them. We are going to do more for health. We are doing now, but we are going to improve of it. And I can say I'm very happy when uh, Cho Yin Kao was the minister commissioner for health. He did his best, and he was able to bring some foreign co co funding. Now the, coma, the, coma, the current commissioner for health is a son of the soil and is doing extremely very well, very approachable, and anybody has anything to do with him is already on the spot. And I'm sure before uh, the, the end of this year, in terms of recruitment to nursing, doctors and all health technology, there are going to be some improvement because the governor is looking into it and we are also advising him what's happening at Ijai, what's happened at uh, Ituri, the hospital at Ituri, and also at Ota, also at uh, Yeshubomi Hospital at Ijabode. All these things are getting something. The one that is up, uh, really making me unhappy, uncomfortable, is the Ulikoe Hospital and that thing. That was uh, they set up a committee 
on the Baba Dini and Koneraji. And we have been looking at it, but I must admit that building that hospital there was a very, very bad wrong decision. The land of hospital was built is a swampy land. Swampy, yeah. Very swampy. And two, the foundation was not. Even at a um, committee, and we discussed it last week with the Honorable Commissioner for Health, we really don't know what to do with that place now because there's no amount of palliative that can make the thing achieve the result. Luckily, the doctor that is doing there came to see me several times. We are trying to provide something there, but you really need to be looked into. I'm not sure what we can do because the rain that goes into that place and the foundation Already that was there, land, this so. was a swampy land. So we will try and see what we can do there. And of course, my dear brother Abakene, let me assure you this. The issue of uh, private hospitals and drugs and things like that. Well, so, but let me say this. Doctors are of different classification, they have different areas and things. What we are seeing, healthcare delivery <coughs> is a teamwork. The best leader, when you have a team, the captain can be captain, or the captain can be the goalkeeper, he can be the thing, but he must be somebody who have what it takes to lead we have statistics that can show you since we have changed to being director head of hospitals in Nigeria, the cost has skyrocketed. And the thing is that is that now the pharmacists are fighting, the technologists are fighting, and the thing that they are separate. And let me advise you, my brother, you go and look at it, you just tell sorry. The largest number of people that have gone on strike in this country in the last five years are the yes, doctors. Sir. At the cause of anything, they are called. The resident doctors, they came to see me, I explained to them, the moment you are on a residency program, you are supposed to be there at a training program. After four years, you want to remain, and you want to continue. Because you have, you are closing the gap for people to come in, in because you did not pass the exam, you want to be a general practitioner, and you are in a teaching hospital, and you are in a federal medical center where people are supposed to be trained. So these are some of the people, and the fact remain today, doctors, many of the best brains in Africa are Nigeria. The last time we talked with Professor Akinkube, he said he's fed up with the current leadership of the enemy. Of the strike and strike and strike, luckily we haven't had strike in the last two, three weeks. I hope they will keep it up and not do, because medicine is a prestigious, a career, is a professional that must earn its name. So the number of fire uh, going on strike, going on strike by the resident doctor must now, thank God, is going down and must continue to go down. And when you have people that you are leading, carry everybody along. We have some very fantastic medical director who carry the administrator along. Like mentioned, Professor Agilia Jai, you see, Professor Lataura, Alunga, even the current siege, they carry the administrator along because nobody clap with a hand. According to Abiola, you clap with two hands. When you have a good administrator, your hospital is efficient and then you perform very well. And that is what I want to continue to say you must do. Now, my brother from Magma, thank you very much. And uh, I want to Thank you for the tell you have seen. But the thing is that when you go to the hospital, I think it's one of the things we have to look into. Every one of us must be committed to our work. You say the nasty experience when you're about to get the card or when you're about to register. I think this is one thing I want to prove to every Nigerian. We should be proud of our citizens. There was a time I went to the Israeli embassy. And I was so impressed when I see the staff there, I think, and I was talking to the ambassador. Well, this is your staff. Why is it they are the same Nigeria? When you go to ministry... Same Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. When you go to any ministry in Ubuntu, you see the people, the sluggers and things. When you go to embassy, you see these staff that are the same Nigeria. Why is it that the same Nigeria, I say, you see, the difference is that before they take you on as a staff in the Israeli embassy, they let you know that when you join this service, it's not it's beyond your salary. They take care of your wife, they take care of your children, they know that you are committed. So they work so hard 
And I think this is one thing I want us to do. The other day we were talking about uh, workers in Ogun State uh, a few weeks ago. The same thing is that the salary is not the only thing. Commitment, dedication, welfare. And I think this is one thing that we need to do. So those card issuers in hospital, we are training them now. And we are calling them, we let them know that's the thing. Yesterday I went to the uh, health management board and I was so moved by the secretary to the permanent secretary. It was so nice as I have to say, ah, this man must be recognized for an award because this lady performed extremely well. And this is why we should recognize people, thank them when they do well. And as far as I'm concerned, my friend back in it, we feel the correct thing is if you want to be a chief medical director, you must go and have a management training. You must have leadership quality. You must have the thing. And of course, leadership of any uh, organization is not predicated for any particular thing. We have had eminent people in Nigeria. And we are Nigeria, we are so blessed. As I'm talking to you, Nigeria are holding important position in UK, in US. I said to somebody yesterday, the medical director or the medical consultant to the late uh, the presidential aspirants in America was in Nigeria. Hillary Clinton, his advice and medical advice is in Nigeria. You go to England, the first Nigerian to even work in a teaching hospital in England, Professor Kadir Shantoko, they hold their own. So we have people that matters and in good position, and this is why I want to say that we are proud of what we produce in Nigeria. We have all it takes in terms of health personnel everywhere. In Guy Hospital today, the head of the nursing in charge of night duty is a Nigerian. And he's killed if I, he trained in Nairo, after that he started in England, he has rose along the rank and is, you know, so the nurses are giving their dues. As a nursing director, the doctor cannot come and say you want to admit a patient into your ward unless you have the budget for it. Last summer, I sat with some nurses from Nigeria. They said, yes, I'm the budget controller in my ward. If the doctor wants to appoint or uh, admit a patient, he has to ask me if I have the bed, I'll have the fund. Unless I supply the fund, you cannot just admit. So the understanding is there, and this is what All I right, let's add the uh, messages, opinions from the short countries. All right, uh, this one says, uh, the problem will still linger if doctors are still in charge of management. Uh, kudos to Bashonu and Devonu. Uh, that is the problem going on in FMC. Instead of the union to clamor for a good administrator, they are still clamoring for an insider who will be a doctor. What a shame on the part of the union. That's Femi from Elega. And uh, last comment says, I greet Baba Devolu. May the good Lord be with you, sir. Please, sir. In 1999, some people were dismissed at psychiatric hospital during Dr. Damsey's tenure. They were dismissed illegally without proper investigation, and they were allowed. Uh, they were they were not allowed to defend themselves at all. What can you do to help such people, please? Just please take note. Yeah. Ulimide from Video Tutor says, like I always say, that most of these current administrations, administration's policies are wrong. That was how they brought an outsider to head the custom service that has caused repos. Again, the yam that was not enough for Nigerians is about to be exported to London, where there is farming in the country. And now they want to bring another outsider to head FMC. I think APC is a total joke. God should help us in this country. That's Ulimide's opinion. Outside as MD may be a solution to the crisis within FMC. Abiyakota, FG, FG deserves the benefit of the doubt. That's Cosmos uh, sending that message. Uh, protest is late as acting president has approved Musa's appointment alongside 13 other MDs for FMC in Nigeria. Uh, number two, FMC is a federal institution and any Nigerian can be made MD, not necessarily medical consultants within the FMC. Abiyakota. Professor Semi Musa is from Abegota and not a foreigner. Not a lot, but they are concerned with that message. Sir, what advice have you given to our governor on the conditions of our hospitals in Ogun State? Our hospitals are short staffed, the walls are cracking, dilapidated, nurses are dying, retiring, 
the doctors are overworked and are also dying. Some hospitals are like mortuaries. Go to a Wekoro, a Meko, or the local government and see what is happening. That's Jemi from Obadaoko. The industrial dispute going on at FMC and Bekota can only be abated if equity and justice is not only done, but seem to be done. One of the well qualified consultants at the center who applied for the job should be given a job and not impose an outsider on the seven consultants, thereby killing their commitment and loyalty. Let the government do the needful and allow the center deliver on its mandates to the people of the state. Thank you. Al Haji Busura, AGA from Koto Center at one. Otumba Debo from Abegota uh, sent in the issue of uh, protests being late as as acting president has approved to Musa. All right, let's go to our Facebook page. Uh, yes, can we let uh, Bachelor respond okay, to that? Quickly respond to that. Yeah. Well, let me quickly refer to the one about the people that said they were dismissed from our hospital. Mm -hmm. That was 1999. 99. I'm surprised that uh, I'm hearing it for the first time, but I want to tell you. Dr. Adamson Tenor at Harrow Sakasu Hospital was one of the best because he was the he even received an award as the best medical director in the continent at that time. And I'm sure at the time he was there was close enough. The point is that there are laws we can't bring the law. And if you commit an offense and you are dismissed, you must have gone through the means because I know Arrow at that time has one of the best administrators in the country, is now in UK. But at that time, he and Adam Singh performed the rest. But if you have the facts, let me have them. But 1999 to this date, what do you want us to do? And people have been dismissed at that time. I'm surprised that Arrow will not dismiss because you know, dismissal, they can go to court. If you don't need them anymore, you say your services no longer needed. There's no way they can do. But if they dismiss them and they have not gone to court in that time, what course of action do they want? But if you uh, have anything, I'm available. Come and about eighteen years ago. Eighteen years ago. So what happened? You see, so those are the things that concern. Well, only me there on the FMC. I still maintain. That. I know that the appointment was made by the. Presidency because the minister sent it to the president, the president sent it there. But I'm just insisting that I know things like that has happened in the past, the end of it is never well. And I'm sure I don't know Musa, I've never heard of him. And if it's in the health system that he is not want to aspire to be MD, people I don't know him. I've never come across him. And those people who are supporting him, unless they have a thing, they should have known that you want to work in a place. We, thank God, we are one of the people who made the FMC to be there. And I thank God for Uliko Irasong Kuti. When we get the FMC, we make sure I have to go and beg the Director of Hospital Services for uh, the man who succeeded, who should really succeeded to become. He was in ministry and he was a naval officer from the Navy, from the Air Force. But we can't seem to come. He's on record today that he did the best. The first two medical director, Otoloni, he did his best for eight years, followed by, uh, what is his name? And he did very well. And I'm sure the Ocean Fade, uh, the Hong Kong, and all those people who work with them, they will know. I'm surprised I haven't heard from the Hong Kong, who is a regular color listing, <laughs> to hear what he said, because I'm firing. He's a uh, he's professional, <laughs> well but he's a man I respect because he had never as far wanted to be medical director, but was giving the best service and he was cooperating with whoever they call the team because that's the way you don't have you don't have to be the team, but to be a member to improve the thing and they are improved the FM Shabekota more than many other health centers. I've been to Taraba, I've been to Uzo, I've been to all the FMC in Uyo and all that, but. Even if you take meta uh, FMC, oh, wow. you can't compare or work, or is even having problem. They brought it to me two weeks ago where the resident doctors are fighting their doctor. They gave them money. The medical director didn't use the money for what it was, but we are making peace and we are helping them to do. So I um, not have nothing against this uh, Professor Musa. They say it's coming from Eloni. 
I've never met him. I've never had his track of record. But if you want to work in an organization, before you resume there, you must know the tradition. You must carry the people. Healthcare delivery is a teamwork. No matter how good a surgeon is, if you perform a good surgery and the uh, nurse does not know the patient well, it will be a failure. Or if the pharmacy does not give the correct drug, it will be a failure. But to be a success, you perform surgery, the nurses give care, intensive care to attend, and that is success, and the patient walk home. They ask you to come and be a professor ahead of SMC in Abekota. You come and you think you want to rule with your own hand. You won't work. So the ministry who made their decision, fine, they have their reason. But as one of the things that I'm still saying, the ministry ought to have appointed the boards. The NMA is crying. There is no board. The NMA are right. There should be a board. If the board has seen it, the board, board will make a recommendation and then the ministry can take a decision. But for you to sit in Abuja and say you're, you do the interview for five people, somebody came forth and you think that, well, we'll wait and see. Okay. We are peacemakers. We would like to have peace. Okay. All right, let's uh, take more calls okay, and calls. come back to the messages. All right, let's comments. take uh, two calls. Let's take two. Let's quickly go through the tweet. Uh, Mercy Femi says, uh, President Buhari is in the UK for medical treatment at the expense of taxpayers' money. Uh, masses cannot even uh, get affordable and cheap medical attention. Uh, also, okay, Yamid Avinci says, brilliant submissions by Bashar Adewolu. I expected no less from the proud product of the Great Abuja Grammar School. Wherefore, uh, 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 says, uh, Is there any law that says outsiders cannot be MD of tertiary institutions? And also, is it only medical doctors that can be CMDs? All right, Yemi Da Vinci once again says, I've always been uh, annoyed by the arrogance of doctors insisting they must run hospitals. A medical director is a business manager. Uh, more than a medical practitioner, do they teach medical doctors balance sheets, accounts receivable, etc.? Anyone who is capable of running a medical facility should be allowed to do so. A nurse with an MBA is better than a doctor. I must commend the Minister of Health uh, on the inclusion of NYC members in the NHIS. It should have been so from inception. NHIS should be a scheme readily and easily as accessible by all Nigerians. It is a shame that successive governments have not made it a priority. President Buhari choosing to be treated abroad is a damning verdict on the state of the health sector in Nigeria. Shame. That's uh, all from Yemi Da Vinci. A billionaire G. Shafer says the Ministry of Health should be should declare a state of emergency in the health sector. Let us save Nigeria. And uh, Ushumi Wafatai says, Good morning. I was commend to Bashoro uh, Adewolu for his in depth knowledge of our health sector. The sector needs to be reworked as he has asserted. Ambassador Abiola says, FMC is not doing fine. I believe I was in the facility this month. I was disappointed the third time. If I'm asked to come, I would not do so. All right, that's for the tweets. Let's quickly go to uh, the Facebook comments. Adewale Shubo Ali says, the health centers being managed by the local government have been superbly run at a very reasonable cost. How I wish the secondary and tertiary hospitals Will take a cue from them. All right. Um, these are short code messages. This is how we wrap it up. Uh, this one says we want the commissioner for health to visit a border really health center. The place is too bad. The roof and the walls and ceilings are falling off. That's Shola. Uh, Chief Dodger, the one is uh, obviously a bundle of experiences and in fact an encyclopedia. It is a great honor and privilege to be listening to the Aguru of Ibaland. I think elders like you are very rare, sir. You are always saying the truth and you never care whose ox is God. As a youth, also an indigenous of Ogo State and indeed an Igba man, I can only pray that may your days be longer, sir, so that we can learn more from your wealth of experience. Although it is my you sent in that one. Sir, well done. Uh, but I want you to look into the case of some specialists who were called to render services, which were lacking in the state hospital in Jai some years back. And up till now, we're not paid for a year. This oh. is a good office to effect this payment. Comfort from Ibarra, sent in that one. The solution to the Likoye Hospital Ashiro is uh, demolition and then to be rebuilt. The foundation is below the perennial annual water level. GD Oyebola, sent in that one. 
Thank you. Sir, if we look at your impact in the health sector, it is incomparable. But what prominent advantages are doing to contain incessant strike in the health sector, especially at FMC Abekuta, because another one is looming, as the Minister of Health didn't listen to the health workers' demand at FMC. That's coming from Shogbandi Lokman. All right, yes, sir. Quickly, if we check our time, it's about five minutes <coughs> without having which means we have less than five minutes to go. Well, I want to thank all the people that have come and I want to say I'm very happy and I want to sincerely appreciate everybody. But I want to say, particularly the last person, the people that you say they have not been paid, please let me know. You know how to reach me particularly at Ijai, and not those people. Before the end of today, I will visit the Barrel Health Center, and I can assure you that the Commissioner for Health will be there. There are some other things that need to be done, and of course we are talking. Both the Permanent Secretary and the Ministry of Health in Ogun State, very dynamic and working man, and the Permanent Secretary Health Management Board. We are going to do a lot of things that we will. But I keep saying, health is my constituency. And there is nothing that you leave me not to do. And for those, uh, Yemi, they say to uh, the Shubo Ali, thank you very much. The primary health are working. And they are going to make sure that what we should do now is to make sure that their traditionals and the thing are well established. And when they are established, um, we lay emphasis on prevention rather than treatment and cure. It will be. And this is one thing I want to come back to the governor of the state because environmental sanitation is very, very important. And I want to say that, well, in your community, no, but we have to thank our governor. We have to thank God for giving us this type of governor at this stage. A lot of rot has been cleared, and we continue to do so. We know we are short of doctors, particularly the specialists, the, uh, we need radiologists, we need uh, people that are even very, very essential. But there are some very good ones that I can say, in terms of when you talk about cardiologists, we have one of the best in the country. We have to have ophthalmology, we have one of the best. I don't know how many of you have gone to private hospital here, they are very good of them. The, uh, Elohim, the Nyolonda at Abelawe is one of the best eye centers that we could have. He retired from the FMC, he now set his own practice there. Dr. Shifade set up a cadre center in Adigbe, the Red Room, and there are some private things too. Even my own senior, Dr. Omar Jakodumi, still have his own clinic which is working, and those are some private hospitals that are still very good. And we want to ensure that it is, but the point is, Ability to carry on is what we must do. And of course, uh, as usual, time is never a friend of us on this program when it's getting interesting, when it's getting educative, when it's getting um, intelligently uh, drawing to the perfect end. The time will cut us short just as it's done today. Uh, many thanks to our guest, the Aguru of Edward Lange. Uh, Dr. Basharu Ade Doja Adewolu, MFR, member of the Federal Republic. Once again, we say thank you. Uh, this is your age, still agile and active. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure when we call you again. Uh, yes, many of those uh, issues unsolved will be sent to him, and he has given his words and commitment that he will follow them up. I also thank everybody who's been a part of it. Dele Ayodo is my name. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria and God bless Rock City. Before he calls uh, his last one to mm. say the last word, mm. I want to let every one of you know, today there are August bad deals. They didn't show me bad day cake. So people will not say, I won't come here. I can't. Oh. Whoever your guy is in, I'll right. tell you, I'm waiting for bad day cake. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, thank you very thank much. You, Have a wonderful day. My name is Toby Joseph.